So today we're going to do something different. We're going to review Clarence O, Clarence Kennedy on YouTube. Pretty much every week for the last maybe month, I've been receiving questions on Patreon asking for me to go over some of Clarence's most recent videos. I figured if there's demand, then I might as well just do it on the main YouTube. So I reached out to Clarence. I asked him if I could do this. He was very happy for me to do it. So here we are. This is a new style of video for Weightlifting House. If you enjoyed it, let me know down below, like the video, and just let me know which videos you want me to try and do more of this style of commentary slash analysis over. All right, so we're gonna be reviewing the 225 kilo clean and jerk, 185 kilo snatch, 410 kilo training total that he most recently uploaded. So I've actually been watching Clarence since probably 2000, uh, 2011-ish, basically before he could back squat 200 kilos, right when I started getting into weightlifting, I found him on YouTube because, well, you just, there weren't many YouTubers at the time. And this 410 kilo total, I'm looking forward to seeing all of this. I mean, if we think about the biggest totals in the world at the moment, the 102 kilo category, that world record, well, it's a world standard because no one's hit it yet, is 412 kilos. I don't know how much my boy's weighing here, but I think it's probably around 100, maybe even slightly less. So he's at that level. The 96 kilo world record held by Sarab Muradi is 416 kilos. That was done off a 186, 230 performance. And then after that, I mean, Clarence is, he's at the top. I mean, Tian Tao did 410. That's his best total ever. Meso Hasona's best is 404. That was with a 176, 228. And I know this isn't competition. I know Clarence hasn't had to cut weight. He hasn't had to do the other things that are involved in, in successfully competing. But even so, this, this is impressive to me. Okay, so we've got 200 kilos here. So we're right around 88% of his 1RM. I think his PR before this was... He certainly did 220 a few years ago. It might be 222.5. And you can see... I'm just going to pause and go back. One of the interesting things with Clarence is he looks nicer as the weight goes up. I mean, it's almost like he deliberately only allows the bar to achieve a certain height. He peaks every single lift at the same height. And to do that without minimizing the amount of force that he puts into the lift, he just adds, well, basically there's more horizontal movement, more horizontal displacement of the bar after contact light earlier on in the lifting. This 160, probably he won't pull very high. Yeah, not at all. It's probably the same height that he's going to pull this 200. Let's see the 190 first again. Same height. It's very different if you look at someone like Norik Vardanian, who is all about just pulling the bar as high as possible on every single lift. Another thing to notice, Clarence sets his back so tight, and then the first thing that happens is there's a slight movement. But again, he's so strong. It really doesn't matter. That's a beautiful 200 clean. Jerk, he's always been, I guess, better in the clean, I feel, than the jerk. Steps way back, doesn't step as far forward, but it's an amazing lift. As you can tell, I'm a fan of Clarence. I've, I've enjoyed watching Clarence for years. I've basically been training for the last 10 years at the same uh, the same 10 years that Clarence has been, has been training. I've not yet reached the numbers that Clarence has, uh, but yeah, he's been very motivating to watch. That was actually a great jerk. That was really nice. He had a lot of balance under there. I mean, he could have held in, held that split position, I feel, for a considerable amount of time at that point. Nobody watching. I mean, this is an enormous lift. Enormous lift. This is six kilos under the world record in that 96 kilo category. I mean, he must have... Did he go up in the clean after this? I feel like he ought to have. Yeah, beautiful. Do you see how... I mean, he doesn't always get this. This is so nice. Oftentimes, he doesn't step forward quite as much. I mean, when you first see, is his first ever 220. I wonder if, Alex, you can just edit that in here. His 220, when he jerks that, you cannot believe that he's able to regather his body directly under the bar to save it from falling forward because he just doesn't, he doesn't get under it enough. This, however, okay, there, it's slightly forward. And then just that movement there, that little bit that I just did, when his chest just moves through, suddenly he's found this really nice base of support and he can hold that position. I mean, the weight's, you know, it's, it's in his front foot, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, he can just hold that split 
And the girl has actually noticed, which is nice. So I, I feel pretty pleased that someone is acknowledging just how unbelievably impressive this lift is in that gym. Okay, I wonder if he did actually snatch after the cleaner jerk, because that's it's not common. I think for someone who's as strong as Clarence, maybe he can he can do that. And if anything, the cleaner jerk just potentiates the snatch and makes him feel even stronger. I can't do that. That 140 is lovely. I mean, I, again, I actually prefer the way that Clarence lift when he was weaker. Um, you know, there's a great video of him. I think he's maybe 18 years old. He's uh, in a training hall in, in Spala, maybe. Misses a 160 snatch behind and then cleans and misses a jerk on 200. It's a good video. Again, maybe that is going to be playing right now. But even though he misses that 160, and this is, you know, six years ago or something, I think I probably preferred the way he lifted. But he's a better lifter now. I mean, if you just look at, like, the percentile that he's in, weighing 100 kilos, being able to lift, I think, reportedly 192.5 uh, and then 225, like, that puts him in a higher tier than 160, 200 at 85 does. Amazing 180. Hands on the bar, feet under the bar. That's how we like it. All right, 185, this is his top lift. Again, nobody watching. Just astonishing. I mean, just astonishing. I mean, <laughs> almost kills the guy. Is that the end? That is the end. Oh, and he, look at that freeze frame. Cheekily looking back. He knows what he's done. He knows that he's just made a meme out of that entire gym and out of that guy. I will say this. I've had people say to me before, Clarence isn't a weightlifter. And they have this argument that you're only a weightlifter if you compete. Obviously, he competed back in the day, but they disregard that. And I understand, in the same way that if you play football, you don't call yourself a footballer, you say that you play football. And I think what they're going for is that Clarence has to say that he practices weightlifting, but he's not a weightlifter. But I just feel like this is a cheap... Let's take these off. I feel like that's just a cheap argument. I mean, we all know what it's like to train. We all know what it's like to, to push hard. There is no way in my mind that that Clarence has got to where he is without having felt in a way that none of us ever have and ever will the level of motivation, determination, fatigue and pain that can be brought on by the snatch clean and jerk and the back squat. I know it's easy to say online he's not a weightlifter because he doesn't compete, but I don't think you could look him in the eyes in person someone who you know has gone through far more of the difficulties, the trials and tribulations of weightlifting than you have, and look him in the eyes and say, you're not a weightlifter, but I am, because I competed and I went 100, 130. I know there'll be some people who disagree, they'll still discredit him, call him not a weightlifter, but all of the athletes that you're watching online, a lot of the time that you're loving, aren't in a different situation than we see Clarence. Clarence has worked incredibly hard. I mean, to do the squat routine that he's done, the deadlifting, the snatching, and the clean and jerking from such a young age, from the age of 13 upwards, the mental capacity that he has had to, to show, the, the physical obstacles that he's had to overcome, not least with knee injuries, is remarkable. And I really don't think you can use this argument that Clarence isn't a weightlifter. I mean, if he's not a weightlifter... I kind of don't know who is. We all got into weightlifting because we love lifting weights. We love pushing ourselves. We love trying to improve and better ourselves day in, day out, like Sisyphus, pushing that, that rock up the hill, watching it roll down and doing it over and over again. Just because in recent times, Clarence hasn't stood on a platform, probably for ethical reasons. He knows what it's like to roll that, that rock up that hill more than anyone. So... For me, I'm going to continue watching Clarence. I like watching Clarence. Uh, I didn't mean for this this first episode to take such a serious turn at the end. This was going to be a light-hearted video, but you know what? It just had to be said. I just had to get it out there. I'll do more of these if people like them. Let me know down below. I know this was a short video, but uh, we can do longer training videos. In fact, I think he recently uploaded uh, like a 30-minute full transformation video, which is insane. I can always do that sort of stuff. I could do some uh, some old Soviet stuff. Whatever you guys fancy, just let me know down below. All right, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Catch you all next time.